Good afternoon. In this video, I'll go over solving polynomial inequalities. Now, one thing you got, a couple things you got to remember is that you want the polynomial to be in factored form. Um, if your polynomial is not in factored form, you might need to do some synthetic division. Um, you might need to uh, maybe do some grouping. Uh, but in any case, you want to make sure it's in factored form. The problems that I'm going to do today, they're all going to be in factored form. So um, Whatever method that you need to use to get it to factor is what you're going to need to do first. You want to make sure that when you're looking at the graph, anything above the x-axis is when the function is greater than zero, and when it's below the x-axis, it's when the function is less than zero. And that's a key point to keep in mind as we go through the problems. So here's the first example, solve the inequality. So what we're going to do with these inequalities is we are going to use this as a function and I'm going to graph the function knowing that each of these is going to be my x-intercept. So I'm going to use the rule of multiplicity and graphing and end behavior to, to, to do this inequality instead of using a number line and testing the values. So it's a different method. Um, so I'm going to take and get um, a graph here. So let me go ahead and draw some, oops, some axes. And I'm going to know that I have one x-intercept at x equals 3, another x-intercept at negative 1, another x-intercept at 4, and my other intercept at negative 2. And I know that this is a, a fourth degree polynomial, one, two, three, four. If I multiply it all together, I have x to the fourth. So my highest power is going to be x to the fourth. My leading coefficient is going to be one, so it's going to be positive. So I know from polynomial end behavior, this is going to look like this and like this. I also know from multiplicity that it's got to go through each of the zeros. So I'm just going to go and sketch this graph it doesn't really matter where I go. It doesn't really matter where this is. It can go up all the way forever. It doesn't, I don't really care about that. All I really care about is that I have a rough enough sketch of the graph that it'll tell me what's above and below the x-axis. So now I'm going to go to my inequality. My inequality is greater than or equal to zero. So I want this to be greater than or equal to zero. I want all of the parts of this graph that are above the x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. That's right here and right here and right here. That's above the x-axis. So then what I'm going to do is just change this into my intervals and I'll have the solution. So I have from negative 2 to negative infinity so negative infinity to negative 2. Also from 1 to 3. Oh, you know what? I better make these brackets. Why are these brackets right here? Because I want it to be greater than or equal to. All right, so brackets. And finally, from 4 to infinity. And that's it. I mean, it's in, in interval notation. If you wanted to write it in... Um, inequality notation you would say that x is less than or equal to negative 2 or x is between 3 and 1 or x is greater than or equal to 4 okay all right so let's take a look at another example solve the inequality this inequality okay so first thing um, let's go and change this into a function of x and so f of x is going to be equal to x times x plus 1 squared times x plus 3 cubed. And the degree, the degree of this polynomial is 3, 4, 5, 6. So the degree is 6. So this is an, an even degree with a coefficient that's positive. So I know the end behavior is going to look something like this again. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. 
we got a 0 at 0. We've got another x-intercept at negative 1. And we've got another x-intercept at negative 3. We know it's got to go this way and this way. So I'm going to go and, well, we got to look at the multiplicity here. So the multiplicity of 0 is 1. So that's going to go through. So we go, we're going to go through this, back up. The multiplicity of this is of, of negative 1 is even. So I'm going to bounce off of that. Okay, so I'm going to bounce down. And then I got to come back up and go through this one to get to my end behavior. All right, so now let's highlight what we want. We want to be less than 0. So we want underneath. So that's here and all of this. So that's underneath the x-axis. So let's go and answer the problem now. So now we're doing the inequality. And the inequality is going to be x values that are down here. Well, this goes from negative 3 to negative 1. Now, there's a reason I'm stopping at negative 1. And then again, from negative 1 to 0. And the reason I did that is because this is a inequality that's a less than. It's not less than or equal to. If this was less than or equal to, then I could put the whole thing into one interval, which was negative 3 to 0. But this way, I can't because this is just a less than. It's not less than or equal to. So I have to not include negative 1 as well. So I have to separate it into two inequalities. And that is your answer. So that's it. That's all there is to solving linear, um, solving inequalities of polynomials with higher orders.